In this lesson, I'll show you two examples on how to use the midpoint rule to approximate the area. The first question reads, estimate the area under the graph using the midpoint rule. Now before we begin answering this, the midpoint rule is an area approximation technique based on the idea that you can approximate the area of a shape by adding up the area of several smaller rectangles that make up the general pattern of the shape. Each of these mini rectangles are drawn based on the subintervals you choose. And it's called the midpoint rule because you use the middle point along the rectangle's width to locate the y-coordinate. In theory, the more subintervals you pick, the more accurate your answer is. So going back to our question, the midpoint formula is shown right here. And notice that it consists of several parts. This symbol suggests that the area is an approximate. Delta x, which represents the width of each rectangle, can be found by subtracting the last observation minus the first, shown here as b minus a, and we divide by n, where n represents the number of rectangles you want. Of course, you want to choose an n value that's reasonable, and in this particular case, we'll choose 4. Once you find delta x, you then multiply it to the sum of all the y-coordinates that are located at the midpoint of each of the rectangles you draw. If that's confusing to you, let's begin with delta x. So delta x is equal to b minus a, we have 4 minus 0, 4 minus 0, take a look, that's the first and that's the last, and we divide that by the number of rectangles. I said earlier that we we're going to choose 4 rectangles, and that's a reasonable choice, so I'll write down 4 here, 4 minus 0 is 4, divided by 4 is 1, and this means that each of our rectangles will have a width of 1. Had you chosen a larger n value, for example, you may end up reading the graph incorrectly, leading to potential errors. Therefore, our first rectangle will span from 0 to 1. And since it's the midpoint rule, if we take the average of 1 and 0, so 1 plus 0 divided by 2, that's how you take the average of any two numbers, we end up with 0 0.5. So our rectangle will go up to 1, because that's exactly where the midpoint of the rectangle is, at 0 0.5. The next rectangle midpoint will be the average of 1 and 2. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So our midpoint will be at 1.5, and that's where it will stop. In our next one, the midpoint is between 2 and 3, so 2.5. And 2.5 means that our rectangle will stop right in the middle there, that's our third. The midpoint between 3 and 4 is 3.5. And placing a dot there, we have created our fourth rectangle. Now, had you chosen, let's say, an n value of 8, that would also work. Although, you would have to be more analytical and find more midpoints, and it would take a lot longer. In addition, our graph isn't suited for smaller numbers. Let's go ahead now and plug all this information. We have delta x, it's equal to 1. We'll substitute that into there. So the area is approximately 1 times, and y sub x bar, the average here, was at 0 0.5, and it extended all the way to 1. So that first term is 1, plus. The next term is this one, so the y of this rectangle at its midpoint is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.5. Four the same thing for this, that looks like 4.5. And, and for this one, we have 1, 2. Therefore, the area of this shape according to the midpoint rule is 1 plus 4.5 plus 4.5 plus 2. That's equal to 12 units squared. If you would like to see the solution to question number two, make sure you watch question two of this series. We'll see you soon.